it's one of those things that's not understood. And because it's not understood, things that belong to the children of God, they typically don't possess. And the reason they don't possess it is one, because of fear, possibly bad doctrine, a number of things. It's, I mean, I can't even des describe the list of different things, but there's so much that God has for his children. There's so much that God has for his people. But if you don't know, and God doesn't give it to you, it typically takes another man to explain it to you. <clears throat> and not explain it to you like you can't comprehend. When I say explain, I mean it takes another man to give it to you. God hasn't given every man everything. So there's things that I possess that God has given me because I know his people need it. But then the same interim or the flip side of that coin is that there's so many things that I don't possess that God won't give me. He will require me to go to someone else to get it. And he does that so that we all know that we need each other. The body is fully fit to supply one another. So I contribute a portion here, but I still need every other portion of the body to receive all that God has for me. You understand? Yeah. So the biggest thing I want us to do, because spirituality, even the word alone is taboo. Right. Just just that word alone. And I want to make it very clear when I speak about spirituality, I'm talking about spirituality from its foundation, from its origins, which is only in Christ. Right. So no matter what the new agers say, <clears throat> no matter what the witches say, no matter what the wizards say, I'm talking about spirituality that's rooted in God, spirituality that's rooted from the very foundation of creation. OK, so no matter what, if I don't say it again, the spirituality that I'm talking about is only rooted in Christ Jesus because he was the one who was before the beginning <clears throat> and he was the one who created all things. All things were created by him, for him, to him. And through him. We understand? Yeah. So I don't want to, I'm going to like keep reiterating that because people will take clips, phase out what you say, they hear the word spirituality, they may drop into it, but we're talking about spirituality that's only through the Lord Jesus. You understand? Yes. Good. And so also the other thing you have to do is keep an open mind. And the reason I say keep an open mind is because no man knows everything. However, when you listen to someone, if you're thinking everything you've learned already at the same time or trying to process everything based upon what you've prior heard, you're going to miss it. You get it? Yeah. And the way grace works is that, you know, it's kind of religious saying, but some people, some things are taught, some things are caught. <clears throat> but it's a true thing. Some things are caught by the Spirit of God. So the Word of God says that, let he that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church which means that there are individuals who do not have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So when I say keep an open mind, what I'm saying is listen with ears to hear that your spirit may be enlightened. Listen with ears to hear that you can receive grace. Because when a man shares his encounter, you have an opportunity to receive grace from God for everything that he's encountered. You understand? Yeah. God gives a man certain things two ways. He gives a man things that are for him and him alone. You know, you've heard me talk about secrets. But then the vast majority of things that he gives a man of God is for his people. But most times, if we don't just careful to listen with ears to hear and an open mind and an open heart to receive, we won't receive what God has for us. What I was saying prior to that was listen with a heart to receive. Listen with ears to receive and keep an open mind. That's one of the worst things Christians do. We're so close-minded to what we don't know. You understand? We're so close-minded to anything that could possibly seem taboo. Am I saying accept everything? No. The Word of God says that we have to test everything. So I'm pro-test the spirits. <laughs> but I'm also anti just being taboo and just I'm not willing to touch that. Am I saying go buy a Ouija board? No. I think there's clear definitive bounds where we know the lines. But then I think there's certain things that if another man of God doesn't enlighten us, we won't know that we have access to. You get what I'm saying? If we don't see within the scriptures that Paul takes the handkerchiefs and sends them out to the people so they can be healed, there's a certain dynamic of miracles that we never understand is possible. You understand? Yeah. So by another man's encounter and another man's experience, we then receive grace. So Peter Popoff would take the water, and he was trying to imitate something that he had saw with the wrong heart. But it didn't change the fact that what he was imitating was a pure thing. Mm. Remember, Satan is a duplicator, not a creator. Yeah. 
Satan is the one who duplicates, not creates. So even when I talk about spirituality, and we're probably going to do about 45 minutes, because we're like right here. You know, my 45 spiritual minutes. <laughs> but I want to honor people's time and the capacity. So we, we'll just kind of keep this, kick this ball just rolling as long as it goes. But even like that with the water, it didn't change the fact that it was a spiritual, really a spiritual reality, a spiritual truth that exists amongst the heavens and in the earth that is actually pure and right, although someone tainted it. You understand? Yes. It's kind of like when we talked about the astral projecting. The witches and New Age people, they practice astral projection, but here it is, the prophets, their spirits were leaving their body because the Lord was taking them somewhere else to see something else. So it doesn't change the fact that there's something pure and there's something that's right and there's something that's good but if you're so taboo, you will miss so much of God. And there's nothing wrong with missing so much of God. I just err on the side that I desire all God has for me. You know what I mean? <clears throat> There'll be so many individuals who just miss out in this life. And they'll go through the life to come. They will go on into heaven and it'll be a glorious time for all of eternity. But it doesn't change the fact that while here on the earth, I desire all that God has for me. So that's why I say keep an open mind. Keep an open heart and keep a quiet heart. The heart that's racing about everything that is heard from this past preacher, the heart that's racing based upon, oh, I don't know about that. Well, of course you don't know. That's why God has someone talking about it, <laughs> right? The moment you already decide before they're finished, you've proven yourself to be a fool. Mm. Only a fool vents his heart concerning a matter not having heard the whole thing. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So... Even if something's wrong at times, I just listen and then and then make an assessment rather than just about <laughs> right and almost all spiritual things are that way. people just before you can even finish your statement, right we talked about that um a couple weeks ago, remember with the the dead and the living and all that kind of stuff, and these are things that are spiritual realities and are spiritual truth, so when I talk about the path to spirituality. All things were created by God. You know, they say that the devil doesn't play fair, right? Yeah. You know, the devil don't play fair. No, the devil play by the rules. Mm -hmm. You're ignorant of the rules. The highway or the framework or the path to spirituality was created by God, and no man violates it, including the devil. And I think one day we're going to stand before God and say, say, man, they was blaming me for stuff I didn't do. We give him too much credit. We give him entirely too much credit at times. Not all the time, but you get what I'm saying. So don't don't take that out of context as if I'm saying he's not powerful. <laughs> no, he has power. That's why he said he's given us power over the powers mm -hmm. of the enemy. So I'm trying to make sure I'm clarifying everything as I'm going because I understand the hearts of people. And not necessarily people in this room, but hearts that land up on the internet. Mm -hmm. So you want to just kind of keep things in a way where it's irrefutable. Is the best way I say. So keep an open heart, keep an open mind, keep a quiet spirit, because that way you can receive. And when a man shares his encounter, is the moment that you can then receive grace, or you can receive impartation. And when I say impartation, meaning the impact that it can place on you. So I'm always pro. You always hear me say, I always honor men of God's graces because if you want grace, you have to receive grace. And you don't get to receive what you don't honor. So even when I'm uncertain about things, I choose to not speak about it. And then if I'm certain about it being wrong, I'm even careful about how I speak about it after that. You understand? Because you don't get to receive the very grace that you dishonor. So when we talk about angels, you don't get to receive grace that you dishonor. When we talk about visitations from the Lord God, you don't get to receive grace that you dishonor. Any of those things, if you want to receive grace, you have to honor it. Amen? And remember, no man is an island, so there's grace within every person uniquely fit, including myself, including you. There's grace that you don't even know exists within you. And one day, as God begins to use you, people will honor grace that's within you because they want to receive. And the grace that's in you, God puts it in you, and God won't give it to that person. God won't give it to you. He'll make you come to me to get it. And in the same turn, there's certain things he won't give me, but he makes me go to another prophet to get it. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Because no man has it all on his own. Amen? Amen. 
excellent. So let's go to uh, Second Kings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So that's that. Keep an open heart. Keep an open mind. Keep a quiet spirit. Honor grace so that you can receive grace. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Excellent. And I want to I, I want to make this clear for those listening and even those in the room. I'm very aware of what happens when people listen to me. When you listen to me, you will be captivated because it's favor. Not only will you be captivated, you will all of a sudden find yourself developing a deep love for the word of God. Not only just the word of God. So when I say the word of God, you have the scriptures and then you have the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. But there were no scriptures then. <laughs> so when I say you will develop a love for the word of God, you will develop a love for the scriptures and for the word of God. The word of God being a person, that person being Jesus. I know the essence that goes forth when I teach. I know the character and the nature that is laced within everything God has taught me. So I'm aware of that. And I say that to say, I don't want people to dishonor where they are. You understand? I have spiritual sons, spiritual daughters who are outside of proximity. So I tell them, don't dishonor where you are because of what you're getting from me. Because the temptation in the heart is to begin to develop disdain for other men and women of God because you hear something that's less revelational or you hear something that's less spiritual to you, not knowing that it's just as spiritual. It's just each man has a different grace according to the light and the calling that he walks in, right? So when you listen to me say things, I say things from a certain perspective. But if you listen to a pastor say things, they're going to say it from a different light and a different view. <clears throat> and the same when you listen to an evangelist. You're going to hear from a different light and a different view. Each one of us has a different grace within us. And in that, there's a different portion of counsel of God that we all receive. Right. So I preach one scripture and I bring out a certain light and truth to it. Yet the pastor stands next to me. He preaches it and brings out another level of light and truth to it. One may seem more revelational. One may seem more base level. But without the base level, you don't get to build to the revelation. You understand? Because the base level builds the foundation for you to go into the spiritual realm. That's why within all the scriptures it's layered with levels of revelation. It's layered with levels of interpretation pure to God, not interpretation to our own standards, interpretation that's laced from God. You understand? Yeah. That's what I mean. So when I say you're hearing me, I don't want us to dishonor where God has put us with other people who are serving us as well. And when I say serving us, I'm aware that when God uses me, I'm serving his people. Mm -hmm. And I'm also aware that there's fellow co-laborers who are serving you as well in your local churches, and you don't want it to have dishonor. And of course, we never say it out of our mouths, but we say it in our heart. Well, you know, that ain't what, that ain't what so-and-so said. Mm -hmm. Every man walks according to the light that he has. Mm -hmm. I've always said that. Every man walks according to the light that he possesses. And that light is the same source, the Father. Mm -hmm. The Father of all lights. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So understanding that there's different levels, never dishonor someone else. And you've heard me talk about heaven and even within the heavens, you heard me talk about the different levels and different dimensions. I remember one of my initial encounters with heaven, understanding how they were explaining to me different portions and different levels and different parts that were called light. <clears throat> I got to a certain portion and the Lord Jesus came to meet me. And I began to cry and weep and I was before him. And then he stopped me. He said, this level, he's not ready for you. He, this level has been reserved for another time. This is where he stops. Because I was being escorted. And this is why I was learning different things. And I always understood because as I was ascending certain levels, I was passing other men of God. Other saints. So I knew that there were different levels or levels. It didn't change the fact that the ones that I passed still were in light also. And it didn't change the fact that the ones that were further ahead of me were also in light. Each one to different degrees. You understand? So when I say never dishonor people that are serving you with the word of God mm -hmm. because each one of us is in light in different measures. So when every man ministers, he ministers according to the grace that he's been given. Right? As I said, let each one of us 
minister according to the grace that's been given to us, which means that there's a certain measure of grace that you may possess that he doesn't possess. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see that where I've talked when we talked about healing and I said, the word of God says that, hey, go heal the sick. But most people have to pray for the sick. The reason they have to pray for the sick is because the grace to heal the sick isn't with them. You understand? Now, when I pray for people, I'm praying to help them understand, but I'm really not praying. I'm praying because that's the measure that they understand. Like Jesus, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. Jesus was really being sarcastic in that moment, in that discourse. He says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Jesus is enveloped inside of every spirit, but do you have the ability to draw him out? Do you have the ability to understand, like an umbilical cord, the life source that flows through you? And can you pass it back out to someone else? Right? right. So when I talk about healing or miracles and things like that, even with miracles, do you know the difference? Is there a time, there's a time when it's for me to work a miracle, and we've seen it. Mm -hmm. And then there's a time where, God, we need a miracle. Mm -hmm. The reason we need a miracle is because we can't work it. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. That's why when we talk about the gifts... The apostles, the, the working of the workers of miracles. But then there's times where we need a miracle because we can't work it in our own strength. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But if we don't understand that every man has grace, we would just trample over people that may seem like lesser. And it's not lesser. Each one builds up to the whole man that we're unified. Amen. Mm -hmm.